Hey, what's up everyone? I hope you're all having a wonderful day or night. I hope you will enjoy today's video, so let's just get into it. For how often men lie, you think they would be better at it. Like, no way I'm constantly catching these men in their lies. This is embarrassing for you. Either get better at it or stop doing it. Okay, catching these men. How many men are we talking about? And never mind that. It's all about practice. How am I gonna get better if I stop? Take you for example. I accidentally girl bossed too hard and now I have a real job with real responsibilities and like people keep emailing me and asking me questions and I don't know the answer and I'm just really stressed out and I don't want a girl boss anymore. See, like I said, it's all about practice. How are you gonna keep on crying if you stop girl bossing? Dr. Kim here. Today we're talking about the secrets your ex does not want you to know. The first secret is they do want to talk to you, but they're afraid you might pressure them to get back together. Second, they may not want you to know the true reason why they actually broke up. There could have been a lot of little reasons that actually led up to the breakup. But if it's about a character trait that they think that you cannot change, they may not want to let you know that. Next, they don't want you to forget about them. They also likely don't want you to know that they miss you too. From my years of being in this niche, I've seen a lot of times the exes that actually do the dumping miss the other person, but they show all kinds of signs that seem contradictory. Next, they have not forgotten about you. You spent months with this person or even years. It's not possible to forget that type of romantic rapport. So if you're worried about whether or not your ex is forgetting about you, you need to try to work on your self-esteem. The next secret is, is they likely do feel some guilt and feel bad about leaving you. The next secret is, is they likely want to believe that they made the right choice, even if they're still having feelings. And finally, they are wondering what you're doing. In a college study, they actually found that most students actually check up on what their ex is doing, even if they were the ones who broke up with them. <laughs> Dr. Kim, was it? What kind of doctor are you? Because that part is kind of important. Just putting doctor in front of your name doesn't mean I'm gonna take everything you say for granted. And why is it so important to say doctor when you're talking about relationship, dating? And again, what is it with this obsession about your ex? Whoever is my ex, I really don't care what secrets they're keeping away from me. Also, what type of doctor is using a college study as a point of reference? Aren't you also the ones who say human brain doesn't fully develop until you're 25? But sure, fine. College students are the ones checking on their exes more often than anyone else. They're also doing the most bar hopping and nightclubbing. So what now? What do we do now? Should I go ahead and join them? Or should I go ahead and live my own life without being stuck in the past? Women that I know are not going to feel special if they have to get all dressed up to go out and then the guy makes her pay for the date or half of it. If this happened to me, which it has once, there wouldn't be another date. Listen, this is the way women look at it, okay? It takes time for them to get ready. And some women spend quite a bit of money to get ready for a date. And I personally, I want to set the tone early. You know, this is what it's going to look like if we go out. I'm not taking out my wallet. Would I ever? Yeah, of course, on special occasions, like a birthday or something like that. But I'm the one who does all the cooking at home. So when I go out... I don't want to have to pay for it. Now, these are the fundamentals that my parents ingrained in me. I like to be treated like a lady and feel special. And I want to be in my feminine energy. And I want to be on the receiving end of things when we go out. And it's just not about taking because I also love to give, but in other ways that align with my divine essence. I don't know why I keep posting this because all this divine for me is just as bad as saying something gave me a nick. What even is a divine essence anyway? And how exactly are you talking about a first date and then you're mixing it with a long-term relationship? Long-term relationship, sure, you cook, I pay for everything. I don't even know why I'm saying this because I pay for the first date anyway. I'm just getting annoyed of all this divine this and divine that and divine the other. If we're talking about the first date, you cook at home, yes. So do I. I cook, I clean, do my laundry. That's not a good excuse for you to say I should pay for the first date. Oh, you spend time getting ready for the date. I don't care. You spend money, not really. You're not buying new makeup. You're not doing your hair every time you go on a date. You're not buying new clothes to go on a date. Oh, you poor. If you poor, don't ask a girl on a date. Well, if you're poor, don't say yes to a date. Oh, we spend so much money getting ready. Yeah. Here are a few examples of clothing items. Yeah, all that for the amazing price of way less 
less than I spend on coffee every single day. All these dresses are beneath you, you spend way more on clothes. That part still doesn't make me care about how much money you spend on getting ready. This is the type of face that gets free Chanel handbags. This is the type of face that gets you a marriage without a prenup. I don't know how I'm supposed to go on living my life knowing I could potentially look like this, and I don't. But maybe I could. <laughs> Hit me up if you know any good filler ladies in London, <laughs> because this face would solve a lot of problems for me. No, not really. That filter or whatever you would do to your face to look like that, it won't change anything. Unfortunately, none of that is gonna change your personality. I will never understand when a guy doesn't like you, so then you're like, okay, that's fine, like you don't have to like me, but your friend is cute, can you put me on to him? And they get, they get bamboozled, they're like, ah, be for real. I am being for real, like you be for real and put a girl on and put your homeboy on. Don't be selfish. I'm not selfish, I'm being considerate. See, we have a different definition of friendship. Homeboy is my friend for a reason. And I love my friend. And there's no way, no how I'm gonna put my friend to something like that. Another reason he's my friend is he's smart. There's no way, no how he's gonna put himself through something like that. Do you remember when Steve Hardy said that time, men respect women with boundaries, get some? Yeah, that hurt me too. Um... And it's not even about just having standards and having boundaries in place. It's like you need to live by them. Like, and you need to be your standards so hard that you don't even talk about it. You don't discuss it. Nobody needs to know verbally what your standards are. They can feel it because that is in the essence of who you are as a woman. And a man disrespects you, gone. Period. Alrighty, bye bye. Fine, I get it. You can't tell me what your standards are, but can you at least tell me what's disrespectful to you? I don't appreciate you wearing that on your girl's night out. Oh my god, disrespectful. I don't want you to start an OF account. Oh my god, disrespectful, period. Alrighty, bye bye. Two weeks later, oh my god, he was such a narcissist. Well, at this point, I have no more bye byes to give. It is so funny how I'll post a video that engineers can relate to because I'm an engineer. And there are always some men who are like, um, that happens to men too, you bitch. <laughs> and you just like not fathom relating to a woman? No, but I think I've realized that being an engineer doesn't make you smart. It makes you probably to be a good engineer, but other than that, what you guys can see if you're watching and not just listening are some of the videos that she posted. Not one single video that will draw a comment like what she just said. Nothing. Not one single video. Beauty brands I won't touch. You're on your fifth fun little beverage on the day to maintain motivation. Some stuff about being an engineer. My natural hair on the east coast tattoos and piercing as an engineer yeah nothing uh what's gonna be one of my videos without one of these cuckoos let me read what she said me realizing that there is a life-changing full moon coming up on the 7th of march and if used properly it can start a catalyst of positive events ah damn it i've missed the full moon when this video is gonna be public is gonna be 9th of march and just out of curiosity how many of you had a catalyst of positive events coming on 7th of march or are you just like me and you've missed it oh well Maybe next year I'm gonna win the lottery without even playing. Better watch out for that full moon. These are some things I will never do again after being single for three years. Settle for less than I actually deserve. Being single, you do get a bit lonely and then your standard line gets a little bit blurred. And sometimes you settle for less. Then you just end up looking like a mug when it doesn't work out because you lowered your standards for that person. And it really hurts your ego. Never again make excuses for questionable behavior. Let people show you who they are and then believe them when they do so. I will never again put someone on a pedestal. That one really hurt. I let my feeling for someone get in the way of what I want for my life and myself. Easy to get swept up and forget about your own personal goals and direction in life, but don't do that. And I will never again dampen the essence of who I am just to be liked by someone. They have to like me for me. And yet somehow you've still been single for the last three years. At this point, the obvious issue wouldn't be that no one likes you for you. If you think being in a relationship is all about you, then best of luck to you. I would have assumed that being in a relationship is all about us. You know, the two of us. As in a couple. Yeah, but what do I know? I guess what they mean by it takes two to tango is you standing on my feet and me trying to move. 
when she brings you food after an argument. Here. What's that for? It's for you. You made this for me? Yeah. You gonna eat it or no? You was just mad at me a little while ago. Why you and? me food? You gotta eat, right? That's kind of suspicious. You don't just make me food after. Just eat it. What's this white stuff on here? Take a bite. <laughs> eat the food. You take a bite but first. Uh, no, not at a banana. Oh. Delicious. Why are these pancakes so big? Who you make these for to rock? You've been watching CSI a lot and old reruns are snapped. I don't want this. By the way, we need more antifreeze. Come on, eat the food. Antifreeze. <laughs> you know when watching horror movies and all you want to do is scream, don't go into the basement? That was me wanting to yell out, don't eat that food for this entire video. In all seriousness though, I don't even know if they meant to post this as a joke or not, but being like that with each other, especially if this was not a joke, acting like that with each other after an argument, that's a long term solid relationship right there. I would still not eat the food, but hey, that's just me. Anyway, this is gonna be it for today. As always, I do hope you enjoyed the video. If you didn't, I still appreciate you for making it this far. Thank you all so much for watching, stay safe, and I will see you in the next one.